you guys did a lot of great podcasts together. He asked you in a very uncomfortable process of why you don't do stand up. So let me ask you, do you hate money? <laughs> well, I'm originally from Canada. Yeah. So yes. I'm a, I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a freaking pinko uh, socialist. Is that what, uh, where you come from? That's not a nice thing to say. <laughs> I thought the Soviet Union, that is a nice thing to say. Like Could comrade, call someone a pinko. <laughs> right? Comrade. Yes. He's a, he's a good, he's a yes. good socialist. Yeah. With yeah. red. <laughs> Like some bold colors, yeah. Yeah. Th there was an interesting tension in your voice and the way you talked about it. There's just not a source of happiness for you. You 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 respect the art form, but it was not something that you were connected to. You, you felt connected to. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, I I respect the art form uh, a lot. I and I grew up with all the albums and stuff. I had an older brother and sister, who so I you know we had the we had George Carlin, we had uh, you know Richard Pryor, we had Robert Klein, we had gilda live the gilda radner uh concert we had a, we had all sorts of stuff but you know I, I don't know there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons i, I do feel like a, a career in show business it is you know they it never goes the way you plan uh, like most things and i was fortunate enough to get started outside of my native vancouver or in my native vancouver i grew up in the burbs outside and there was a lot of industry there so i was fortunate enough to get started as an actor when i was like 16 so there, there, yeah, there was, there were some times early on where I came up with some stand up stuff and did it, but, uh, yeah, I quickly abandoned it. And then, you know, you go through, you do mad TV and stuff. And then, and that's where my, and this is going to sound weird. Do I sound as anxiety as I did when I was on Bobby's podcast trying to avoid his questions? Well, he was giving you this face this whole time that was making, the whole just atmosphere feel full of anxiety. So I'm trying not to give you the face. I'm the whole time I'm saying, play cool, play cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, play cool, Lex. <laughs> play cool. You said it out loud a couple of times. I did. Just, you know, you cut that out. Play cool. Play cool, dude. Cut out. Cut it out. Maintain, bro. Here's what I'll say. There's two ways to do it. I think it's lame when someone who's done one thing for a while goes and starts doing stand up out of nowhere. Cause I think it's an art form that's uh, under attack because it's not like anything else you need. Although now you can, of course, you know, make whatever you want. It's the era of self-publishing as far as making a product and putting it out there, which is getting easier, of course. And I can't wait to talk to you about that with, with AI and how it's changing art. Um, but, uh, the, in stand up, all you need is a, is a microphone and, you know, perhaps, uh, it'd be good to have some mental illness and then you can just run up there and, uh, uh, talk forever. And I say this to, to, you know, comedians, it's like, hey, you guys have to deal with just an influx of people who aren't sure why they're doing comedy. I would ask comedians, you know, like, I mean, not good ones, good ones, you know what they're doing, but everyone else, like, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing stand up? Having said that, I am allergic to money. Yeah. Do you think they have a good answer for that? Why are they doing it? Cause I actually like when I'm in Austin, I like going to open mics, just listening. Mm-hmm. It's inspiring to me, both the funny and the unfunny people, because they've been doing it for several years, sometimes over a decade, yeah. and they're still at it. They're still right there. They're going for the punch. And then especially open mics that are really sad in that there's you know, only like five other people in the audience, and they're usually just other comedians, and they're still going all out as if they're in front of a stadium. But that, to me, sounds like someone who loves it. Yeah. I got no questions for that person. I got questions for someone who goes sideways from here, I'm recognizable doing something and then I'm doing stand up because it's like, and truly, look, I, you know, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be in the business for a long time. And at this point, if I came up, I mean, doing live stuff is fun. I have friends that are like, um, you know, some guys who are primarily sketch people, or you would look at them as sketch people and they can sell tickets for being sketch people. And they, and we'll talk about it. And they're like, well, yeah, you know, I do a monologue and I do a little stand up, then I do a song, then I do another monologue, then I play off the audience, do a little stand up. Um, but stand up is, it's almost like playing music mm -hmm. in that, you know, people are going up there playing music, but what band have you been listening to? That's what you're going to sound like. So it's really, I mean, of course, I'm speaking from zero experience, but I've heard it takes years, of course, to find your own voice. Stand-ups that, when they first go up, they're 
they're doing a, some sort of impersonation of so and so right. and so and so and then you got you got to pop this audience that that's paying and you're going to get run over by the next person who's coming up and uh it's hard to follow the last person who who went up before you and i i mean that is a really hard way to it's a very it's quite a gauntlet to be in to find your voice comedically but don't you have that same kind of thing with sketch you still have to find your own voice yeah with uh, like all the impressions you do, they're just terrible. You know, they're <laughs> they're different spins on different people. They're not like perfect yeah. impressions, right? Yeah. So that's the. I mean, that's a similar kind of challenging journey. Yeah. As stand up, you're just saying they're kind of distinct, and you fell into this one, and you fell in love with it, yeah. which is like what Mad TV kind of opened you up to. Yeah. As a kid, I literally wanted to be an actor. I always wanted to be an actor from a very young age far back as i can remember and i was a class clown and wanted to do comedy stuff and uh, comedic acting and so large. comedic acting yeah early on my my influences were a very predictable list of uh guys from from the sctv early saturday night live uh monty python all of those performers really influenced me it was later that i saw people like kevin klein who's an incredible actor i vividly remember being like 12 13 seeing him get an Academy Award for Fish Called Wanda. And it blew my mind because I was like, he was hilarious. I mean, it was one of my favorite movies back then and now. And uh, he won an Academy Award. And at that point, I, I started thinking more about acting. And then I was, like I said, really fortunate to fall in with, um, I mean, I always wanted to do it. And I was trying to hustle this and that when I was a kid. And then I ended up uh, getting represented and then i i ended up on a teen show i was on i basically the easiest way to pitch it is it's like a canadian my so-called life mm -hmm. with these kids and their lives and stuff and uh, i did that for like five years and i really love acting i really truly love acting and i don't i'm not someone who wants people to know my opinion so that's another thing about stand-up like i love the illusion of what i get to do in uh in uh entertainment and podcasting is great for that but to stand up there and and from i don't know just for me it's like it would have to all be fantasy 